the desert. <clears throat> I lift a rock, the scorpion tenses, amber telson curled in question. Rattlesnakes through grass shake venomous rattles. If she strikes, I'm taught to spit out the poison. Salt thirst, throat gully dry. Day sweats out for me everywhere. Hummingbird heart, my dizzy steps revise the weeds. Trees look parched, undivided into beautiful and lacking. Shadows evaporate like water. No river, not even stones worn smooth. Slingshot snap, my pebble never meets its crow. What threatens will disappear. Hurry home, the future all fairway and green, targeted with ribbons and stakes. This next poem is about an annual event that takes place uh, around September every year in Arizona, the big annual state fair where everybody from the entire state converges at once. And this is a memory, a poem of the memories of that strangeness and confusion and, and wonder at the over overwhelmingness of that state fair. <clears throat> My hand touches the glass that separates children from the model train exhibition built to scale. Toothpicks stand as pines. Loaded coal cars haul the blasted wealth of imaginary strip mines. The town's not more than a sketch for passing through. My mother puffs Kent lights, stepping toward the crafts. I trade my future, riding the rails, seeking out further adventure, hoping not to lose her among blue ribbon jams, elaborately dull needlepoint. Then, pigs, my father's phrase, making a silk purse from a sow's ear. Mohawks and mullets, long-haired Davajo rockers, leather vests, no shirts. Get tanked, hit the fair, a ride dangles you across the grounds. Look up, skirted legs, teens towing flip-flops, cherry nails, the night stays heated. Girls licking cotton candy sticks. There's one face, thrilled to anger, the triumph of sugar. Her mother crowns her queen. She wields the pink cloud like the flag of her own nation. Hey kid, win a prize for your mother. Hive crush, tooled boots, Ripped jeans, lights glow warmer. My mother grips her turquoise wrist. Fry bread drips honey. Powdered sugar dusts our eager chins. The paper plate served by a boy, crow hair, bolo knotted tight. Pristine white hat, I hesitate to call cowboy. What does he see? Kid with dollars to spare. He smiles, counting back my father's change. Time for home. One last bustle and sticky rush of unlikeness through the parking lot. Late summer Saturday night parade of everyone our family isn't. Mormon, Apache, bullhead city cattle hand. Our state's native children fading out of sight in the rearview mirror. I drift asleep to blurry lights. The car follows Pima Road. The tribe owns the east lane. Scottsdale owns the west. Backseat croucher, shy and sensing through my sugary drowse, the emptiness needed explaining, the history repeating. The reservation had grown dark. Single bulbs of houses past the cotton fields. No one I knew lived there. No one I knew ever went. If I wanted in the morning, I'd walk through it, leaving the choking smell of cooling tar, past the model homes assuring buyers no one had ever lived here before. So that's a poem that in some ways gives the, uh, leads us into the title of the manuscript. So where I grew up in, in uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale area, was uh, right on the border of the Salt River Pima Reservation. So to go from where we lived in Scottsdale here to downtown Scottsdale, rather than kind of driving in a straight line, you drive in this very perpendicular fashion, and literally the Pima owned this road and leads one half out of it to Scottsdale. Um, and, and that was a divide. Um, so this next poem is a poem that uh, approaches the history of the Pima. When I was writing this book and, uh, and unearthing childhood memories and trying to, trying to get that story down on paper, I realized that the story in some ways wouldn't be complete if I didn't go into a little of the history of those who had lived there before us. So this is called Pima Houses, 
circa 1850. This poem tries to catch the Pima right in that moment when uh, westward settlers were starting to cross the state headed uh, for here. Pima Houses, circa 1850. The house stands finished when it bears the weight of a man dancing on the roof at harvest time, framed with cottonwood because the herons roosted there. Bent willow poles layered with arrowweed and wheat straw, cattail reed and corn stalk, husk and debris. Then the dwelling is covered and shoveled, earth shrouded, domed like a burial mound. Why should a house rise taller than a man? Womb round, door a tightly woven blanket, they sleep with their heads toward the east. In the morning, there is always rabbit work. If a child dies, a Pima burns the house and builds another. Field trip. Outside the tribal museum, the raised flag of a nation buried within a nation. Our hand-me-down history book said they were like children, naked and afraid. The timeline revealed when horses arrived. A wooden cross stood for God and soldiers. Stone clubs, worn, obsolete, shaved from mesquite root, resembling the potato mashers of New England kitchens. Mulberry bows and arrow quivers tan from bobcat skin. Two feathers, hunting, three feathers, war. The teacher clutched my fingers in hers, pointed to the signs I clearly hadn't thought enough to read. Hands are not allowed to touch the glass. Photographs of women crafting baskets, deeply wrinkled, patient, smiling faces, human figures woven into each, a boy trapped deep within the spiral of a maze, lost or at home, I couldn't say. This next poem is a sequence. It's in a form called a crown of sonnets. So in a sonnet, you have a 14-line poem. In a crown of sonnets, you have seven poems, seven sonnets, and the last line of each poem becomes the first line of the subsequent poems, sometimes with minor alterations in the line. This is called Landscape with Saguaros. You guys all know what a saguaro cactus is? How many of you have been to Arizona before? OK, more than half. All right. The big green cactus with the long arms that looks so human. <laughs> Often very funny. All right, landscape with Saguaros. <clears throat> My father takes a chainsaw to the limbs. He's afraid the saguaro could die prematurely, like a man, collapse, crushing the gutter and unpaid roof. Our house closes around the roots. Land becomes landscaping. The blade's teeth tear into an arm, dampening the motor's pitch an octave. He divides the trunk, mostly water. Does he think I would spare it? Timid boy who won't kill spiders, the son who tries to save what's lost. Pickaxe, poison, hacksaw, knife. He never taught me the dangerous tools. He never taught me the dangerous tools, my minor chores, weed and mow. I drain and clean the swimming pool. The motor pumps like a jittery heart. Across the lawn, I guide a blue hose. Water flows out, wasted into desert. Tight chest, slow breath, the doctor adds a stent to prop the artery. He'll survive years longer than his father. I know his heart works harder than mine. I'm not ready for the day without him. Don't worry, could he say it? He'd be fine. There's no argument, no alternative. Nothing but a heartbeat's needed to live. Not even a heartbeat's needed to live. The hummingbird on the ceiling beam isn't dead or asleep. Blurry wings snap tight, a paper fan. To the bird, our house appears an accident, flowerless aviary without any sugar. My father, patient, climbs the ladder, places the hummingbird's torpid body in his palm, strokes the throat patch, the gorget, muscle that should quiver. Through an eyedropper, he feeds it maraschino cherry juice. The dormant heart accelerates, feathers hover. He holds what I'm afraid to touch. He killed what I'm afraid to touch. The rattle sounds like camouflage, mesquite pods shaken by wind. I heard it ticking beneath the bed, lost in the coolness of our house. Better to find it flat, belly to dust, the Bible says, not coiled like rope. Bullwhip lightning waits to strike.
My skin doesn't leave a hunting scent. The carpet crawled with cruelty. I recoiled. He slit the body lengthwise, skinned it, hung the oily slough, skeletal and waxy in garage light. A warning if I think the desert's safe. <clears throat> a warning if I think the desert's safe. Walking past the canal, I find a skull. Hunter's quarry or hiker's gift. It's light in my hand, not human. Jawbone longer than the brain cavity. Teeth grist, visible like fur. Bone tissue flakes away as I rub it. The skull isn't marble. It's supple, closer to wood than stone. By its teeth, I learn the animal name, small for the pull of its ferocity. I won't dislodge an eye-toothed trophy. I leave what's dead unshrouded. Nothing that dies here needs burial. Nothing that dies here needs burial. I stare outside where the saguaro had been. Remember a photograph he'd taken years ago. Two saguaro back to back, a married couple. He angled the lens toward the sun, haloing the shorter one, radiant through morning light, intelligent, spines lit up like graying hair. I stood in the dark room beside him. Chemicals smelled sweet like poison. Shaping the gray tongue, the paper grain, white flowers bloomed before my eyes, an image he fixed that since disappeared. Our backyard saguaro has disappeared. My father hauled the wreckage to the dump. I switch and wander through mud-soaked hills. Early June, white saguaro flowers trumpet after rain. Here in what remains my childhood desert, eaten by rabbits, bitten by Mexican long-tongued bats. I lean close to the red fruit of summer, sticky infinity of seeds, a saguaro newly fallen. I want to think lightning struck it, better death than rot from frost. The skeleton works toward the soil. Of many ways to die, this is one. My father takes a chainsaw to the lens. poems that uh, Kelly quoted a line from. I don't usually read this poem, but at one point as I was writing the book, I wanted to do something. I wanted to have one poem where I tried to collect just <coughs> fragments and, and images or and ideas or kind of a response to all the Western movies that I'd seen as a kid or Western comics, that whole just kind of comic book idea of, of living in the West. So this is called Comic Book West. If you know my name, I ain't wasting time with introductions. Kid Colt, Kid Durango, my pistol drawn, cocked and aimed. Drop it, outlaw, mustache, eye patch, tinted skin, oily grin. I'm a future legend, I wield a bullet speedy whip. Watch me lasso my rival's quick draw revolver. His bullet nearly nicks an ear, guess I needed the shave. Smiles reveal rotten teeth, Bandits who dance with the wrong kind of dentists. Dust trails buffalo across the teepee frontier. I'm left holding sacks of loot, hero framed and jailed. Cold sweat, jump cut to sweet cream hands. My Delilah, lighting front porch lanterns, smoothing apron folds. This is another poem about the Pima, one that, uh, that Kelly quoted from. So the Pima had this amazing way of, of uh, keeping track of their tribal history. They had these sticks called calendar sticks that they would mark notches into, and the notches would help the storyteller recall the story uh, of whatever happened that was significant in that year. Um, so this is another poem that finds the Pima just on the, the uh, beginnings of, of Western contact after settlers and, uh, and soldiers have arrived. Calendar stick. Owl ear slashed a stick to record events. Comet, solstice, railroad, birth. Armies never burned these houses. No infection blankets, no gatlings, no trees. Bored soldiers ticked off days. Playing games with the natives, corporals won the sprints. The Pima, the long distance races. As fast as boys run, they never catch the river. What's lost? Netting fish with bare hands, river reeds braided into combs. What remains? Sayings for grief at parting. Ravens have overwhelmed us. Uh, 
This next poem is not the last poem in the book, but it's the last poem that I wrote for, uh, for the book. And Casey, who heard me read a couple weeks ago, will have heard this story before, but I'll repeat it. So uh, my parents used to live down in Arizona, but they've moved up here now. And I would have these Sunday night phone calls with them. Where they'd often give me good ideas for poems. You know, remember when this happened? Remember when that happened? And my mom would occasionally say, you can write a poem about that time we were in that really small rowboat at Lake Powell, and that storm came up, and we all thought we were going to die. I said, well, you know, I haven't yet, but, you know, maybe someday I will. So this is the last poem I wrote for the book. Not the last poem in the book, but I'll read it. Sudden Storm, Lake Powell. Our little boat claimed by water on all sides. The bright paper of morning dimmed to slate. The boat shakes my mother's hand so hard she can't light up. My father doesn't talk. He should have known. Our little boat skitters, the motor stutters but keeps speaking. No flare or compass, no way to signal despair beside our silence. Faces washed with spray, hands gone cold, lightning splinters the horizon. If it strikes the water, if it strikes our boat, the wind forces her words into simplicity. Stay down, she's waiting to hear it, we're lost. Through the pleated waves and valleys between waves, trough and crest, I watch my father's steady shoreward gaze. My mother prays soil and root, prays ladybug. My father prays shortwave, prays antenna. The wind hurries toward its nest in the trees. Smarter birds have all taken shelter. No one says rescue. If we find the shore, we will find it alone. We are past mythology past fear of water serpents, spirits of mist, as if the world were beginning again. What new creatures might spring to life once the waters subside, once we are gone? Each direction seems false, gray is false, the color of a corpse. From shore will we find it beautiful. For all we know it's night, for all we know we've drifted out to sea. The motor hums like civilization. My fear pitches up, a song. My mother's hair is silver like the water. My father's hair is silver like the clouds. The motor spits its oily complaint. Peril of swell and plunge. Water never lulls. If the stutter cuts, if the waves rise higher. A new underworld of gray. My mother's wet lashes, ashen lips. My father remains a clean-shaven man. There's no reason to catalog the water's sheen all color drained and dissolved. My father navigates the dark. My mother turns her back toward where she thinks we're going. Waves split and replicate. Waves themselves seem lost. No birds to lead us, whales to drown us. No masts to raise or oars to ply. Our errors were never classical. We need white gulls like flags to lead our straggle. I'm sullen, whole bottomed Our lives were never meant for water. Slosh and pound when the boat lifts up briefly, then slams down hard again. If the motor chokes, if the fuel evaporates. If we arrive, will the terror renew us and find our hands brought together again? The sky teaches us the first color was lightning. Any spark within, we owe to it. And the hand of God comes rolling like soft, enraged trees. All right, I think I'll just read two more. Um, there are several poems in the book that have the title poem. Uh, and this is one of them, called Pima Road Notebook. No one ever told me I belonged to the earth. I changed tribes year to year. Cherokee, Cocopa, Pueblo, Mojave. Clouds like spirits didn't prove religion. The distant voice of drums was only thunder. Wagons circled into tract houses. Cinnamon toast, cold milk, Sunday shirt. The reservation kept both sides out. One day we packed up what we owned and drove until it snowed. The last poem of the book is called Monsoon Return. This is a poem about an experience probably many of us have had where uh, you return to a house at which you once lived but no longer lived to see what's changed and what stays the same. Monsoon Return. If I drive past the first house in my mind, lightning branches like disease, spreads in veins where Charlie Miller set his hand on fire, 
where we killed the pregnant snake, where my brother almost drowned. Whoever lives here hasn't changed it. A hand slowly draws back the curtain. Who's that lurking outside? Who's out at all in weather like this? I idle and wait for the sudden shocks, the long forgotten emerging as new. Empty rooms of childhood seen again, the past opens, a house with many doors. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Right.